When the limits of our skill and ingenuity are put to the test, what we've done in the past may not prepare us for what lies ahead. We begin along a river in British Columbia, Canada, on the afternoon of June 25th, 1993, where Dave Sandylands was brushing up on a skill he hadn't used in more than 10 years. I think because Wave had never done it before, we weren't quite sure what to expect. Okay, it! I don't think Dave had done it for a while either. Although Waverly Steinbaum had never flown before, he wanted to use Dave's hang gliding kite when he went on vacation the next day. Dave had agreed to teach him how to use it. I decided it would be good if I went up and did a couple of circuits before Wave went up. How did it feel? Good for the first five seconds. You know what, Wave? Wave's wife, Trish, had reluctantly agreed to help them. I was 22 weeks pregnant at that time. Really, the only reason I was there was because they needed a third person. The second time, Dave shot up really quickly, kept gaining a height, went all the way to the end of the rope. felt like 10 seconds, I was uh, at full 500 feet. The view up there was spectacular. I was trying to get the feel for the winds on what strength they were at that altitude and just the handling of the kite again. You get down to two lengths. What do you do? For the uh, hit it, just flop up and down. Perfect. Thank you. You're going to be a father soon. <laughs> I didn't think that this was a safe thing to be doing. That's still pretty high. But Wave was really excited about it. He was always getting into something new, you know. All right. Give it a yank. Perfect. Okay. It starts to go off to the right. Push the kite to the right. It had taken me approximately two weeks of training to get to a comfortable level where I was actually flying by hand. And the instruction that I was trying to give to Wave was insufficient. We rushed too much. Two legs. Lift the kite. That's the signal. Okay. Hit it. I had to drive the boat so that Dave could give Wave instructions and spot him. And all of a sudden, he was going off in the wrong direction. And the kite starts to go up. At this point, I'm wondering if he's in control or if he's not. Got in as close as we could, not knowing what was going to be under that kite. When we continue, I was in nurse mode, but I was scared. We were just best friends and lovers, and I don't want to lose this person. Ah. Okay, Daddy's turn to eat. Mommy said my wife got her hair cut, so she said. When first-time hang glider Wave Steinwand lost control of his kite and plunged more than 100 feet to the ground. The only people who saw him fall were his friend Dave and his wife Trish. Wait! Called his name a few times, no answer. Wait! I thought he was toast. Wait, are you okay? Oh. The seat had broken upwards oh. into his back. Still. Just lay still, don't move your head. Uh. He was conscious, uh, he was incoherent. 
Okay, I'm an emergency room nurse and I just wanted some extra help here pretty quick. At that particular time, the tide was out, but it was coming in. When the tide is in, he would be underwater. All the way down to the fishing boats. But I didn't know exactly how to describe to them how to reach us. He was definitely in a lot of pain. He's not a wuss. It takes a lot to make him complain about things. I knew if I was going to function properly here and not lose it, that I was going to just have to detach myself. We're going to get you out of here. His major area where I could see that he was losing blood from was from his ankle. The bones were embedded into the dirt. He had some bruising in his abdomen. And of course, I mean, you're, you're worried about a spinal injury. You can only get through by boat. British Columbia Ambulance Paramedics John Verde and Bob Alexander drove as close as they could to the scene. We had no life jackets, didn't know where we were going and, or who we were with. Just a little ways up the river, that's how it was described. Keep still. Pregnancy was forgotten. I guess I wasn't thinking of Wave as a father, I was thinking of Wave as my husband. And I don't want to lose this person. We're basically up to our waist in water to get to him. And the tide was coming in. If we would have had to have gone back out to where the boat was, uh, we would have been up to our necks, if not over our necks, in the water by that point. Make sure the hovercraft's coming, please. The first thing that I saw, besides the crumpled hang glider, was a person that I had recognized from Delta Hospital, a nurse that I had just met. The hovercraft's going to come and get us out of here. I thought, gee, this is perfect. I just assumed at the time that she was just somebody that happened to be out in another boat. The water was coming up, he was getting wet. The clock was ticking. There was minimal amounts of things that we could do to help him. We needed to get him to the hospital as soon as possible. Hovercraft coming. Before long you could hear the roar of the hovercraft off in the distance. Then before you knew it, they were there. One of the crew members on board the Canadian Coast Guard hovercraft was David Percy. When we're running on the water, we have a cushion of air underneath us. When we go on a boat ramp, we can basically deflate the cushion. So anywhere you can see, you can basically go as long as it's flat. The paramedics had just finished packaging them up, and uh, in about 45 minutes would have been underwater. I was devastated. At that point, I left, and the other gentleman that brought the wire cutters asked, are you going to take your kite with you? I said, no, I don't even want to see it again. I was in nurse mode, but I was scared. I figured life was going to be changing. That's for sure. Pain in your neck, Wade? Wade was transferred from Vancouver General Hospital. Orthopedic spine surgeon Marcel Dvorak took over his care. He had injured not only the bones in his back, but had also crushed and, and injured some of the nerves. No wonder he can't feel his feet. After he was put into other people's hands and they were taking care of him, it was like, whoa. What am I going to do? We're just best friends and lovers, you know, ready to open a new chapter in our lives. I didn't care what shape he was in, as long as he was alive. Wave underwent a series of operations on his fractured ankle, heel and shoulder, his right lung, and the broken back that had left his legs with some paralysis. We do most of our work in the operating room. But after that is when the work really starts for the patient. He had to learn how to walk. He had to really start from scratch again. This happened the end of June. I said, oh, September, you'll see me back at work. I couldn't understand that there were injuries that, that would last for months and years before you'd recover from them. The end of August, they decided that he had healed enough to try and walk. He lost all color, went kind of gray. <laughs> Sweat dripping off him, but he did great. 
I thought walking is just oh, one foot in front of the other and away you go. Far from that. I'd have to think about lifting my foot, pulling it ahead, placing it down flat and straight ahead. And with every step I take, I'd have to th go through all those thoughts. <laughs> On September 3rd, we had about 20 of our friends in. And we had our 10th anniversary celebration in the hospital. I don't think anybody will understand this. I think probably the whole time we were in the hospital, Trisha and I said to each other, probably a hundred times, how lucky I was. We had everything. We had a baby on the way. In November, just one month after Wave's own release from the hospital, seven pound, nine ounce Madison Steinwong came into the world. He asked the doctor if he could deliver her. The doctor said, sure, why not? And Wave just kind of figured it was something that most dads do. He didn't realize that usually it's only the cord cutting they get to do. Come on, Madison. Let's go home. When she was born, I was the first person that touched her or held her, and that was, uh, I tell you, that just, just rips at your heart right there. Did pretty darn good, didn't we? <laughs> Now he just walks with the uh, ankle foot orthotics, but uh, does really well with them. You'd hardly know, you know, that he was basically paralyzed from the knees down. His nerves will regenerate. It will probably take a, about two years from the time of surgery. Oh, okay. Wave is still in rehabilitation, trying to get back into shape to rejoin the police force. How many other fathers would have the opportunity? to stay home with their, their newborn daughter for the first year, year and a half of their life, whatever it takes me to get back to work. Another blessing in disguise. Hang gliding. Never again. Uh, never again. Never again. Never again. Never again. Never again. <laughs> in the past. I partially blame myself because whenever you try to give crash courses, you'll end up regretting it. And it's not worth a life, a friendship, or a family. You got a brush or just this is it right here you're okay. looking at it it wasn't dave's fault for what happened up there it was mine i was the one who said let's get in this kite let's go up nobody put that kite on my back i've always wanted to try bungee jumping but i'm not going to try bungee jumping now <laughs> family's what it's all about now and that's the way it will be for the rest of my life